Hey everybody, it's Dee from Quickspy, and I am here to talk to you about sublimation printers, namely this guy right here, the Epson 2720, the Echo Tank. Um, so we're going to go over a few things in this video and hopefully clarify um, a lot of questions that beginners have when it comes to using the Epson uh, printers uh, instead of a sawgrass. So um, we're going to go over four things in this video. Number one, why Epson? Then we're going to talk about the ink. We're going to talk about the 2720 versus all the other models that you may have heard of. And then finally, we're going to talk about paper size. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about why Epson? Why are sublimators buying Epson printers over a sawgrass? And um, I mean, the only real answer, an honest answer, is the price. For an entry level Epson printer like this one right here that I just got um, from Target, as you can see, the Target packing tape is across. Um, this model does pretty much the same thing as the sawgrass model at less than half the price. So assuming that an entry level sawgrass printer is going to set you back at least $500, this Epson basic model, the 2720, um, can cost anywhere from 200 to 250 and lots of times you can catch them on sale and save 50 bucks. Uh, so this particular one, I got it at Target, $199 shipped to my door for free. So that is why people are choosing to go with the Epson models over the Sawgrass. Um, they don't have better tech support. In fact, they have zero tech support. So that's something that you kind of need to understand going in. If you're going to convert an Epson printer and make it a sublimation printer, you can't really call Epson and tell them that your lines are clogged or something went wrong um, because they're not sublimation printers. Okay, So you're kind of taking the risk of uh, saving half of your money, putting sublimation ink in this Epson and losing all types of support because you are using this product completely outside of its intended purpose. Okay, it's not a sublimation printer. It can be used for sublimation. So that's why people are using Epsoms. Now let's talk about the ink. And I'll just kind of show you the box. You're going to get your Epson printer and it's going to come with ink. I haven't opened the box yet. We're going to do that in the next video. Um, but you're going to get Epson ink and because this is not a sublimation printer, the ink that comes inside is called pigment ink. It's the same type of ink that would go in like an office printer or something that you would print out a letter, a document, a brochure that's pigment ink. You do not want to put that ink inside this printer if you're going to use it for sublimation. Okay, you have to buy sublimation ink. Um, I'm not endorsing this brand or anything. Actually, it's the first time I'm buying this brand just to try it out because I like to experiment. Um, so just because you see this in my hands does not mean I recommend it. I may come back later and tell you how it went with this ink, um, but <laughs> it may be awful. Uh, in any case, it's sublimation ink. You're going to um, find a supplier. I got it off at Amazon. And you're going to see it's very, very different. For one thing, one good way to know whether or not you have sublimation ink is to just look at it. The yellow looks like milky mustard. Okay. If your yellow looks like nice and bright, maybe even orange, that is not sublimation ink. That's pigment ink, and you don't want to put it in your Epson printer. So, again, the Epson box is going to come with ink inside the box. 
these little inks here. You cannot put them in here and use it for sublimation. Set those aside. Buy a pack of sublimation ink from Amazon, from Etsy, wherever you want to. Um, I can link to some of the ink in the show notes, but this is what you want, okay? So now we've talked about ink. Don't put that pigment ink in your Epson printer, okay? Now let's talk about the 2720. Let me move this post-it note. The 2720 versus the 2760 versus the 3720 versus the 3760 versus the 4700 versus the 4760. Um, there are going to be some differences. This 2720 is the entry level model. Okay. It is the least expensive. Um, it does not have a paper tray. All of your paper will go into like a rear feed. So as you go up in model numbers, uh, you will probably get different features such as a paper tray, maybe a little media card slot to put, um, you know, a camera card in there, or maybe a USB slot. Um, there aren't too many differences other than um, the paper tray slots. Some of them do fax, like this one does not fax. Um, but the differences for what you need it to do for sublimation are really non-existent, okay? Um, that pretty much like you can, there will not be too much of a difference between what you can do on a 2720 and a 4760, but you're going to pay a couple hundred dollars extra, like for a paper tray. Um, do you really need a paper tray? A paper tray is nice to have, keeps your paper clean. Um, but do you need it? No, you don't need it. You can keep your paper clean inside like a Rubbermaid storage container or inside of a desk drawer. If you can keep dust off of it, um, then it's okay. You don't really need a paper tray. Uh, but what you can't do with a model like this is you can't just keep your sublimation paper in the back and like not use it, right? We all know dust falls every day and that will result in dusty lint um, on your paper that transfers to your print that probably clogs up your printer. Um, and the results for sublimation are going to be those little blue specks that you get when your paper has lint on it or your substrate has lint on it. So those are the basic differences between the 2720, the 2760, the 4700, the 4760. This is the very, very lowest end model, therefore the cheapest. Every little thing that gets added to it increases the price for things that may or may not really help you in your sublimation. You don't really need to fax a sublimated print. Um, you don't really need to get cards out of a printer, like a camera card slot. You can just kind of transfer that over from your computer and print it. Um, they might be nice to have a paper tray, but as long as you can keep your paper clean, it's not mandatory for you to be able to sublimate, okay? So we've talked about that and Finally, let's talk about paper size. This is um, another thing that is, there's absolutely no difference between what the 2720 and let's say the 4760. There's no difference in the paper size. And the paper sizes that you can put in this basic 2720 and going all the way up to the 4760, you can use regular letter size paper and you can use legal size paper. Eight and a half by 11, eight and a half by 14, that's it. Unless you bump up to the, uh, well, I think actually the Epson has like a 7700 line that takes 11 by 17. Um, you have to be careful though, because that's a five ink printer instead of a four. Like these are four ink printers. Uh, anyway, to get to this size paper, 
13 by 19 to get to this size paper, it's almost as big as this printer, <laughs> um, you have to upgrade to the Epson ET15000 to get to this size paper. I'll just give you, show you a little bit of a difference. So you'll be able to use letter, you'll be able to use legal, but you will not be able to use 13 by 19 unless you go all the way up to the Echo Tank 15,000. Um, and that starts at, I think, around $600. Um, understanding too at the time of this video this is December 2020 so if you're watching this you know a year later the prices could be completely irrelevant at that point um, so there you have it the two pieces of paper are regular standard letter and legal size and that's for the Epson 2000 models, 3000 models, and 4000 models, whether it's 4000, 4700, 4760, um, 3200, 3720, 2720, 2760. The model doesn't matter. These are your two size paper options. Letter and legal. That's it. All right. I hope you found that useful. If you did find that useful, please consider subscribing to the channel. Our next video, we are going to talk about what you can actually sublimate on using letter and legal. We're going to go through a whole bunch of different types of blanks, like flip-flops. Can you sublimate flip-flops with an Epson 2720? Uh, can you sublimate air fresheners, bookmarks, mouse pads? Puzzles, socks, you know, like, like what are the limitations for the paper size versus the substrate? And we're going to go through an entire pile of blanks, garden flags, waffle towels, sequin pillows, pocket pillows, Christmas stockings, and we're going to line them up with letter paper and legal paper to show you uh, whether or not you can print out designs uh, that are suitable to sublimate on those substrates, given the size limitation of the echo tanks, letter size and legal size. All right. If you like this, consider sticking around, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.